Good morning, Cube community, and welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We are here midway through day two of supercomputing 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be joined by Dave Vellante. Dave, this is now the second day of your first supercomputing. What's your hot take? Well, I love this uh, this this session, this season. It's GTC, but it's the open ecosystem. It That's is. really what it is here. And you know, the innovation is just to the roof. I mean, I'm loving it. I'm loving the networking conversations, the liquid cooling, supercomputing goes mainstream. Mm -hmm. I know, it's happening. HPC is cool. See We're hip. Nerds stuff. are hip all it of a is, sudden. It is serious nerddom here. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> it is. And speaking of two very well-spoken, fabulous nerds, Sarah and John, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me. Good to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Your energy is awesome. You're both smiling. It means you're having fun. Yeah. John, I'm going to open up with you just in case folks aren't familiar with your incredible background at yeah. Hot Isle. Give us a little bit of an intro. Give us the pitch. Yeah, so uh, I started on the internet very, very early in 1991. Uh, didn't even know anybody else with an email address at that point. Um, what yeah. a time. So, Was it, that is crazy. What, yeah. what an interesting time. Yeah, what an interesting been, through, time, yeah. right? Exactly. So, you know, basically started founding companies when I was 20. Uh, started growing businesses, entrepreneurship. Um, really rode the whole kind of early internet wave. Did a lot of work with open source. Uh, basically co-founded Java at Apache, uh, which started the whole Java on their server ecosystem. Amazing. So that was all kind of like me doing a lot of work with a uh, very small community of people at the time that grew to be very big. And so from there, uh, started mining Bitcoin in 2013. Uh, did Litecoin in Vietnam in 2018 Amazing. and just kind of continued that career. And then I think there was a big crypto crash, at, you know, 2018, 2019. We remember the winter. Yeah, yes. it was like a big winter. <laughs> took a breath. <laughs> took yeah, a yeah, breath. So, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so these guys reached out, these guys reached out to me, and they're they they're like, "Well, we're going to do an Ethereum mining operation." And I was like, "Well, I've never really done much with GPUs before, but I can figure it out." So worked on that, and we grew it to 150,000 AMD GPUs across Whoa. seven data centers in the United States. So it was a big, huge operation. I was just gonna say, that's yeah. not a small op. Yeah, no, we did it all through COVID. Uh, we kind of, you know, dealt with all the supply chain issues, uh, couldn't get switches, couldn't get, you mm -hmm. know, equipment shipped all over the world. Um, and this was actually working with all AMD GPUs, which gave me that kind of insight into the fact that their hardware is actually really good. And so when that when Ethereum switched from proof of work to proof of stake, mm -hmm. all GPU mining pretty much stopped in a heartbeat. It was like all of a sudden this business was gone. But that's good because the energy usage for Ethereum just dropped to zero. It became, you know, proof of stake. And so that gave me kind of the idea. I was looking around at what to do next. And the, the idea with that was, hey, AMD is not really paying attention to this AI thing. And this is a year and a half ago. This is, Lisa wasn't even talking about it in public. Like it was, you know, just kind of like a, a distant memory or I don't know what was going on. So eventually AMD started to talk about it. Lisa around October, November of last year really started to dive deep into, into AI. They released the MI300X product in December of last year. We were like one of the first companies to go out and buy it in January of this year. We deployed a very small installation of it as a test. And then we proved that the model worked and we proved we got a customer onto it. And so we're like, okay, well, let's go deploy more. So in September of this year, we just deployed um, well, we partnered with Dell, so I did a whole bunch of work in between that, but we ended up partnering with Dell and we deployed uh, 16 servers, which is 128 GPUs, far cry from the 150,000 that I, you know, did before, but we got a, you know, crawl, crawl, walk, run. And so now that we've deployed this, we did it into a tier five data center, switch.com best data center in the United States. This is where CoreWeave has a huge amount of- In Nevada, compute. right? Is that- They're, they're all over the US. They at the right. right. Yeah, so yeah. They, have, they have locations all over the US. Ours is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, okay. Which is all 100% green power. 
Um, and so, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's wow. a core tenet of what I'm doing. Yeah. And our, even our Ethereum mining operation was all on green power as well. So it wasn't like we we're completely destroyed. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's always been a very strong focus of mine is to be sustainable. Um, and so we're doing something that really nobody else is doing today, which is focusing on AMD compute. Yeah. And so we want to be that voice of alternative compute for AI as a whole, because if this is as transformative of a technology as the internet was in 1991 and watching that growth, I think that having alternative solutions out there for people to use is really important for the whole safety and growth of AI as a whole. If we're putting this on all of our devices, we need to have we need to have like alternatives. We can't just have AI controlled by one company. Everybody right? wants that. I mean, obviously, yeah. Dell's but yeah. the hyperscalers are building them. Yeah, own. exactly. What, what's Dell's perspective on this, Sarab? I mean, you know, even I, I think even Jensen would say this is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, all, all yeah. Lives, right. What, yeah. What's your I mean, perspective? Like the, the the story around AI that Dell has built is the Dell AI factory, and the goal and objective is to simplify AI infrastructure consumption across the board. So our focus spans across building custom AI solutions so that the customers can move fast and, and put a validated ecosystem around it from compute storage and networking to deliver an end promise. To deliver an end promise that meets the performance capabilities that they need to support those AI workloads, right? Yep. Be training, fine tuning, inferencing. Yep. So irrespective, it's a, it's a GPU farm, an AI factory, which is building AI trainings to all the way, you know, enterprises using inferencing, you know, workloads on their ecosystems. We provide all of that. So we simplify that across the board and the AI factory idea is to to offer choice, choice of GPU technologies, yeah. a partnership with NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. They should all exist. These, yeah, well, and like, to your point earlier about decentralization, exactly. it, it, better optionalities, better for everybody, better solutions, yeah. more efficiency, less wasted power, higher ROI, shorter time to value, I could go on and on. Yeah. We totally agree, let's put it that way. And open yeah. is the future, yeah. open is the future. I mean, like innovation and collaboration, you create that ecosystem and let everybody contribute and build on it, so. Yeah. So John, you're building supercomputers. It says on your website you offer remote access to Dell PowerEdge XE 9680 with yep. eight, eight uh, MI300X. Yeah. What does that mean, remote access? You're, are you so, basically building a cloud? Yeah, so we basically are the CapEx and OpEx for anybody who wants to deploy compute themselves, but they don't know how to, mm -hmm. right? So we can go out, buy the servers, deploy them, get them up and running, and give them access to it as if they own the machine themselves, right? And so a lot of this technology is so new and novel, you need to be able to have very low level access into the whole machines. And this is something that hyperscalers can't provide today. They have to service a wide number of customers. They can't have people tweaking the BIOS on the machine. So we, uh, right. we allow that. Yeah. And, and that's a unique right. perspective right. that like really, I don't see anybody else in the space providing today. Yeah, and with so, things like Lambda, it, sets it, it takes you further away from the runtime. But, yeah. that. but I'm, so I'm looking at the specs, you got Intel CPUs, 50, either 52 or 32 cores, and you got, you got AMD MI 300X, uh, and then you got high high bandwidth memory, you got two terabytes of RAM, 122 yeah. terabytes of disk, you're using Broadcom uh, uh, networks, Nix. it's yeah. rocky, and and 6x per rack PDUs, and, and that's the package, Yeah. and I can have some flexibility in there, and you guys help me provision that, set it up, and yeah. it's mine. So we never wanted to give our customers an excuse not to use us. Okay. I mean, so. great business model there, I will say. That, wise. <laughs> it's like so you've started a few best. companies. Yeah. It's whole, it's whole that you, Sorry. We'll get you some water. Voice. No, don't worry about it. Boy, yeah. Okay, and so, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. It's best in class. So. It's the best of the best. Oh. Yeah, if we get so. some water up here, it'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Dell used to have, I mean, I, I don't know if I wouldn't consider this necessarily an OEM business. And it's, it's different, but, you know, Dell used to have this separate OEM business, but this this whole the whole nature of this business is changing. All right. You're providing this core infrastructure, making it simpler for folks like John to, to right. add significant value. This not not <laughs> value added you remember the old VAR days, you know, yeah. you'd Oh my goodness. You'd buy a VAX and you'd yeah, write yeah, yeah. A <laughs> code on top of it. You guys don't know what VAX is, you young people. <laughs> oh I know it. <laughs> Some of us nerds. Yeah, exactly right. Some of us nerds. Yeah. But, um, but so this is a different 
business right. for you guys, isn't it? Maybe you could explain that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, it's all about building the partnerships, the right partnerships for, for future, right? I mean, you look at AI, there was a, you know, looking at billions of devices now, you know, interconnected, you know, traffic lights are just staying dynamically with the traffic flow and things like that. So the AI thing is real now, it's, it's out there. And you, you're building infrastructures that are going to be fundamental building blocks for the future as well. So as things evolve, so every ecosystem, the end consumer from enterprises, like healthcare and financial services, like AI is going to expand very quickly over the next few months and in years. So we're building infrastructures that are going to support the future and that building the right technologies from the right GPUs to right NICs, storage and networking, irrespective of what you what you what you what path you want to take. The AI yeah, factory notion is to to set up that framework and enable that choice and flexibility. Yeah. Now, on top of that, there's a there's a vision we are following where you're not bringing your data to AI, you're bringing AI to data, because it's also about you know keeping uh, you know the security frameworks around it, making sure the data is safe, and enterprises don't have to you know put the customer data on cloud. You're able to build infrastructure and and use those custom models in house to fine tune and enter. It's meeting that data where it is. And, uh, and also meeting your customer or your edge device. I, I just want to sit on your AI factory for a second. You actually brought the factory here. Yeah. It's behind us on the show, yeah, which yeah. is it's very fun. Cool. There's yeah. so many <laughs> cool use cases. I went and played around yesterday. I'll actually drop a video about that later this afternoon. So, I, I, I love the way that we're having this conversation because often we end up talking exclusively about hyperscalers, exclusively uh, about very large companies, very large applications, the biggest models possible. But yeah. what you're saying is there's there's an opportunity for everyone to access your supercomputers. Exactly, it democratize compute. Yeah, so so give me some examples of some of the use cases or workloads that you're seeing or the interest you're finding right out the bat. Of course, so we've got high performance, I mean, we've got basically all high performance compute applications. So computational fluid dynamics, high frequency trading, and of course, everything about inference and training. So, so um, it's interesting to me, John, because you're obviously somebody that's been pretty successful in trend spotting over the years. Yeah, I would say that's a fair assessment, <laughs> Dave, given internet, what you just shared with us, yes. Early crypto, et cetera. And you're betting your business on an alternative yeah. to NVIDIA, not, hey, we offer uh, AMD, Intel, uh, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel. No, you're saying, I'm betting on the alternative. Can you explain the rationale and your thinking behind that and so, why you feel that's the right approach. So NVIDIA has done a fantastic job. Like they're, they are number one for a reason. And it's, you know, their hardware and software is unparalleled. But in the grander scheme of AI and the safety of AI, we talk about sovereign AI quite a bit, right? The, the, the source of the data that we're putting into AI affects what comes out. At the end of the day, it comes all the way down to the hardware. We need to have multiple solutions available for people. And even for my company, I'm more than happy to deploy anybody's compute. Mm -hmm. I'm not tied to a single vendor, right? Like I'll deploy NVIDIA, I'll deploy IBM, uh, I'll deploy mm -hmm. uh, AMD, like Dell, you know, like I'll work with any vendor out there to deploy the compute that our customers are asking for, right? And our customers, these CIOs, CTOs, CEOs, they, these Fortune 500s, they are putting all their eggs in one basket today, mm -hmm. right? And no company ever does that. They always get, they always source from multiple vendors. And so I wanna provide that alternative viewpoint where they can come to me and, and bring it, whatever workloads they want and whatever, whatever software they want and have their systems work across multiple platforms. My background is, you know, uh, working with Java quite a bit, and it used to be write once, write once, run anywhere, yeah. right? Right, That right. was like the whole thing about that. Quite literally, that's and now today yeah. we're writing our code once, and it only runs on one system. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I've actually partnered with somebody who has built a solution that enables CUDA code to run natively on AMD hardware. And that's coming. That's soon. cool. <laughs> and that's huge. That's a little sneak peek you just gave yeah, us there. Yeah. Because that's that's I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, how do you deal with that whole software stack and all yeah. the yeah. the ecosystem? Yeah. Took the thought right so out of my noggin. It's at the compiler level. So right now, AMD has a fantastic solution <coughs> for modifying the source code, but pe developers don't really want to use that. They just want their code to run anywhere without modifying it. So this solution actually 
at the compiler level enables the code to run on AMD. And in some cases, it can even run better on AMD and be more optimized on AMD than on NVIDIA. Yeah, and yeah. so that enabling of different technologies to work together and enabling the developer experience to be better is huge. This is, this is game changing. And I feel like I'm the only person today that really is seeing this, right? Because <laughs> we we're, yeah. we're surrounded by one company, which is great. Again, I'm not, no, no shade thrown, but yeah. we do need to have those alternatives. I think multi vendors is the future, being, right? I mean, the yeah, like, multi yeah. guys, the infrastructure, the technology is that feed an end state of performance and deliver the platform for, for those use cases. It, it, it works fine across the board, right? And, and John, you know, took the took the road on uh, less traveled, and they've bought, gone about building their infrastructure from yeah. the MI three hundred to bringing the Broadcom power switch. You know, Tomahawk four, Tomahawk five, powered by Sonic software for open network yeah. in the cloud. You know, build open architectures that provides unprecedented you know flexibility and agility. So you really unlock the stack and and allow allow that room for innovation and collaboration. That's but exactly it. It's all about collaboration. It's all about working together. Open source, that's my background. But right? of course, it, but yeah. it, it, it needs it needs um, needs someone like you to simplify that yes. for customers. Right. That's exactly uh, it. You know, the hyperscalers have been originally the hyperscalers. And decide which components are going to optimize that, yeah. especially given your background, yeah. too. I mean, it's it, it, there's a lot of decisions in that tree when you're thinking about how to build a supercomputer. But you still have to with Dell on this. We work cl very closely with Dell, Broadcom, AMD, all these companies, all these big companies to build the best solutions for customers. But you right. still have to abstract that complexity like you have with CUDA. Exactly. Right. Okay, and then, mm -hmm. but, but well, the, so here's the, here's the question. The world is multi-vendor. But multi-vendor means complexity. So you so you're taking on that abstraction layer, if you will. Yeah. Is there, is there other IP, other software, uh, so, to, so to minimize that this, complexity? Yeah. So we, as a company, I've made the choice. I'm a software engineer for 30 years. <laughs> I've made the choice for this business to focus primarily on the hardware. The hardware side of it is so hard. And so what we're doing for the software side of things. Hardware's hard, right? Software is yeah, easy, right? Yeah, I was just going to say. Uh, yeah. So, it's yeah, cheesy, easy, cheesy, easy, cheesy. Um, but That's so true. But true. So true. And so we're partnering with any number of software firms, and this allows us to work with their customers to onboard their customers onto our platform. And so, so like, we will, we will never compete with any of these software vendors. So we can have competing software vendors on our platform, and it works perfectly. But you can But in a way, you're competing with the hyperscalers. You're competing with the core weaves of the world. In a way, I, you know, I don't think so. Actually. Explain. I, 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 I want to take. I want to cut back on that one because I yeah. don't see us as competition with core weave or any of the hyperscalers. We're very niche focused. We're very much of the Ferrari dealer, right? <laughs> so we've I got like we've got like that Ferrari garage, right? We've par we partnered with the best vendor like Dell, right? And, and we're the best data center, and we're doing kind of this white glove, hands-on service where we're really listening to what our customers want and focusing on that. I don't, well, I don't need to grow to be a hyperscaler. I don't need to be, CoreWeave is doing an amazing job. I'm, I'm very good friends with them. They're, they're, again, just like with NVIDIA, doing amazing work. Like, it's unparalleled in this industry. But I think that there is a niche business for being this alternative and being this kind of source for people who are excited about deploying a supercomputer but don't know how to do it. You know, a lot of these businesses, they want to own their data. They want to have it in their own data centers. We can help them with that, with, a, with our partnership with Dell, and we have a blueprint on how to deploy this stuff, how to build it. So you're not competing, per se, you're creating at the very tip of the pyramid. Yeah, exactly. We're very niche focused. It's it's very, you know, white glove service. So well, if you're gonna have a niche, yeah. you wanna dominate that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Wanna white best. glove oh, again, super yeah. computing yeah. is a pretty That's dreamy business model in yeah. general. Yeah. What's next from the collaboration? between the two of you? I, I think we just got started now. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's so the vibe I'm getting, so yeah. I'm curious I to mean, see. The AI is evolving very quickly. You're seeing you know, the use cases expand to you know, every possible domain, every possible enterprise. So we're just getting started on the journey here. Got the infrastructure set up, we're working to get the customers on, and then you know, there's so much innovation to add to the stack, you know, from automation to observability to better you know, analytics and running predictive technologies. You know, there's so much coming, you know, with, with our partners like AMD working on the next-gen technologies. With, with Broadcom, we're looking at the next-gen speeds and feeds, like we have 800 gig Tomahawk 5 
out you know a few months back we were already talking about 1.6 terabytes now and and you know and then sonic is is growing quickly a lot of you know left routing and load balancing condition avoidance yeah. capabilities coming so I think the show is just, you know, got started. So and keeping up with that pace of, <laughs> of innovation that's yeah. out of the, the yeah. hardware. Yeah. It's not gone to the days of that's 286, 386, yeah. 486. <laughs> You yeah. can plan, and now it's just like, whoa, one That's after that our model two is yeah. to follow AMD's roadmap, right? As soon as AMD releases one of these products, in the past they've only really worked with the HPC, El Capitan, Frontier, like these right. big supercomputers. Developers didn't have access to it. It's a very limited group of people who could get access to this very specialized compute. Now, if I can do the same thing and give access to more developers, more developers, it creates a flywheel. Yeah. And the more developers need more hardware, we buy more hardware, deploy it, and we just grow with revenue and grow with you know, developer demand. And I think that the community, you know, it's just, again, it's just a focus on growing, like kind of a crawl, walk, run, and get there. And being adaptable. Yeah. And yeah, not putting your head in the and, and thinking that you've got the solution for the next 15 years, we've got the solution for today. And I know exactly. the factory yeah. has the exact same <laughs> mentality. Exactly. We all yes. are trying to find the best things. One of the coolest parts about where I think we are as, as a hype curve riders, wave riders, I should say, is we're at a, such a moment of collaboration True. versus the kind of siloed competition yeah. that we've seen right. in other sectors or other eras of this type of development at this scale. So it's it's a thrilling time. I have one final question for you yeah. because we have just torn through this exciting interview <laughs> in the best way. We were, we were definitely in our Ferrari yeah. in, in yeah. terms of speed on this one. When we're here, I know we're veterans of the show, when we're here this time next year in St. Louis, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say today. And I know you gave me a little bit of a tease, but it, it could be a, a use case, it could be something exciting about the partnership or the democratization. Yeah, yeah, it'll be much faster AI as, as a promise. I mean, you're yeah. seeing so much innovation happen, you're seeing liquid pooling as the next, you know, kind of era of, you know, conversation. Last year, we're talking about compute as start, AI is, is, a, is a new technology influencing, and today we have AI deployed across use cases, talking about liquid pooling, Talking about rack solutions, uh, you know, Nvidia just, uh, you know, we just announced 9712s, packaging everything, you know, 72 GPs in a rack. I mean, how impressive is that, right? I think a big focus area is going to be optimizing the power capabilities. I think that's that's going to be that's key, easy. and then and making totally it as you. dense as possible to bring as much innovation as possible. I think those were going to be uh, key important things, and then we want to see more enterprise traction, right? I think we've got a lot of good traction going on. So hopefully next year I get to be on stage yeah. with John and we talk about real enterprises kind of deploying and using infrastructures and, and how magic. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to hear I some of those examples. Like, yeah. it, it's so awesome. It's been such a pleasure with him. The, um, the thing that I think that we're gonna focus on is just continuously releasing whatever's latest and greatest. Working with Dell, working with AMD, working with Broadcom to continuously make this latest and greatest hardware available to developers, to anyone, and, and support them with that. And I think that that's a really cool mission and goal for us that nobody else is doing right now. Like the, the hyperscalers, they're just kind of throwing it over the wall. You know, smaller cloud service providers are kind of competing against each other, but we're really trying to stand out as being that like unique offering where we are from the BIOS level all the way up, you know, software, everything. just. Just growing. And the hyperscalers have their hundred billion dollar businesses and yeah. they're locked into that. In, they're doing great. They're gonna take it to yeah. three hundred billion. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and thank you, right? Yeah. Because the Absolutely. more that they grow, yeah. the more that I grow, the more that people Indeed. need this stuff. So I'm stoked yeah. to see the CUDA compatibility mode running Me too. volume on, on AMD. Huh. Yeah, that is exciting. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, that'll right. make a big yeah. dead yeah. thing. So yeah. yeah. Well you've certainly sold us and convinced us that this is a, a, a need and an offering and a partnership really yeah. that's helping yeah, propel the future and and provide access. Sarab, John, thank you so much for taking thank the you. time today. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. So yeah. nice. I'm inspired. So I feel smarter, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Dave, always a joy to sit next to thank you on you, the Savannah. desk. And thank always you. fantastic to have all of you tuning in wherever you might be today. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia at Supercomputing 2024. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. You ready?